Thank you. And welcome to the Tech Union High School District Stakeholder Virtual Forum. We are certainly lucky tonight for Margaret Demetrius Auditorium. We appreciate you tuning in and joining us tonight to hear more about our reopening plan. We know that the present situation is not on any one of us in vision for fall 2020. Please be reminded that this is only a temporary situation and there will be a time when we can go back to normal. We have been carefully and considerately listening to our stakeholders and planning accordingly since schools initially closed in March. We have been transparent in our planning efforts, even when it became necessary to pivot or change course. Two examples of what we're working with right now are the increases in positive COVID-19 cases in Arizona, which looked very different just two months ago. And now we're working with the directors of the government. Information provided to families was an effort to provide you with the most updated information that was available to us at the time. We understand that this may have caused confusion, and we are holding this event tonight to bring additional clarity to this process and to our families. Technique Union High School District is a community in the truest sense of the word, and it is very important that our students, parents, Families, teachers, and staff are all comfortable and familiar with our reopening plans, with safety for all as a priority. There are close to 700 responses to the questionnaire that we posted to gather stakeholders in front of our reopening plans. Questions were then organized into categories and duplicates were removed. We have assembled a panel to answer some of the most common questions. Questions answered here tonight are those that we felt most broadly address the common themes. Many questions asked were specific to individual student schedules, activities, or other items that would not be appropriately answered in front of a large audience. If you feel that the question you asked was not covered tonight, we encourage you to first contact your school site administration, and you most certainly can direct those questions to parentinfo at tempeunion.org as well. I'd like to take a, a moment to introduce our panel. Panelists, please stand when I call your name. Steve Adams is a teacher of electives at Mountain Point High School and serves as co-president of Tempe Secondary Education Association. Dr. Amy Jo Overland, MD, is a primary care and sports medicine doctor who serves as Tempe Union's consulting physician. Mrs. Teresa Lindstrom is a physician's assistant with step-by-step -step pediatrics in Tempe, and she's a proud Corona del Sol parent. Mr. Nathan Cleave is principal of Corona del Sol High School, and is behind me, there he is. Mrs. Maida Oroyo is principal of McClintock High School. Mrs. Diane Mumins is our assistant superintendent for business services, and she's out in the audience, so hello, Diane. Dr. Stephanie Frimmer is the director of CTE and online learning. She also is a Tempe Union parent. Mr. Sean McDonald is the district's assistant superintendent for district operations, safety, and student support. Mrs. Kathy Minard, behind me, is the district's director of special education. And finally, Ms. Megan Sterling is our executive director of community relations and will be asking questions and moderating our panel tonight. But before we begin answering questions, I want to frame our session tonight. First, Governor Ducey's executive order from June 29th delayed in-person instruction until August 17th. At this time, there is also a very reasonable expectation that this delay may be extended as COVID-19 numbers fluctuate. This statewide mandate is an important underpinning to the answers presented tonight. The specifics of how the school year will look for your family will be addressed later on in the forum. What that means for our families right now 
is that if you choose the in-person model, the school year will begin as planned, but remotely on August 3rd. This evening, our goal is to clarify the options available to you. It is our goal that this period of remote learning, no matter how long it will last or may last, is a different experience from the fourth quarter. We listened to our families and adapted our instructional model. Our planning up to this point will allow us to transition safely between remote and in-person learning as conditions permit. And secondly, please observe the safety measures in place tonight. These are the same or very similar to what students will be expected to follow when in-person instruction begins. Panelists are following social distancing measures. They are using hand sanitizers, leaving their mask on until they reach the podium, and also wiping down the podium between presenters. Again, we remind you that all information we share tonight is current as of today. Now, I'd like to introduce our moderator, Executive Director of Community Relations, Megan Sterling. Thank you, Superintendent Mendeville. Our first set of questions is focused on safety. What is the plan for masks and face coverings? Can a face shield be used instead of a mask or face covering? Mr. McDonald. Thank you for that question. Of course, mask, uh, that topic has been a hot topic for weeks and even months. Uh, in conjunction with Maricopa County, the cities of Phoenix and Tempe, Tempe Union High School District will adhere to the use of face mask and face coverings. These are just two examples of what they can look like. Making sure that the blue is on the outside. We understand that face coverings may be challenging for our employees and our students to wear in an all-day setting such as school. Face coverings are required to be worn for all staff and students and are most essential in times when social distancing is difficult to do. Individuals should frequently wash their hands and be reminded not to touch their face coverings. Further information will be provided to the students and staff on proper use, removal, and washing of the cloth face covering. A face shield may be utilized, but only in conjunction to a mask or a face covering. Thank you. And why are face coverings recommended for students? Cloth face coverings are recommended to significantly reduce the spread of respiratory droplets um, that go in the air when individuals talk, sneeze, or cough. Since individuals can spread COVID-19 when they are asymptomatic or before they become symptomatic, it is important for there to be routine use of masks in public settings. Thank you. And what about social distancing plans for the schools, specifically classrooms, bathrooms, hallways, and lunches? Ms. Sterling, thank you for the question. Uh, social distancing, also called physical distancing, means keeping a safe distance between yourself and others, typically six feet, but eight to 10 is better. And those are not from your household, of course. To practice social or physical distancing, Tempe Union High School will require employees to maintain a distance of that six feet between individuals, unless distance of at least six feet between individuals is not capable. Classrooms will be designed with the greatest space possible between students' desks. Social distancing in bathrooms will consist of the use of every other stall, toilet, or sink with a limited amount of students approximately three to four per bathroom at a time. Social distancing in the hallways will require one-way routes, and they will be marked with socially distant markers and arrows. I have some examples of those today. Indoor and outdoor areas for lunch will be designated and marked for social distancing in each lunch area. Thank you. 
Thank you. And our next question is, what is the medical community recommending in terms of social distancing? So the medical community is recommending that um, desks and uh, individuals be separated by at least six feet whenever possible, and that's especially for prolonged interactions. Thank you. Dr. Overlin will address our next question, which is, what is the protocol for a positive COVID case on campus? What is the criteria for shutting down schools? Great, thank you so much. Um, so there's a few things. Um, if a positive COVID case is identified while the student or employee is on campus, then they will be sent home immediately. If the student does not have immediate transportation, then they will be placed in a isolation room on the school's campus until a parent or guardian can safely pick them up. Um, the area that the student um, would reside in will undergo our current disinfecting policy approximately 24 hours after the student in question leaves the room, and this is to decrease potential exposure to our cleaners and signs will be posted to notify others not to enter the room. Now, if our student or employee was not on campus when the positive test was reported, then any areas they had potentially been exposed to should have already been appropriately disinfected per the district's daily cleaning policy. In addition, contact tracing will be undertaken by the administrator or designated employee from the school. Affected student families or employees will be notified of the positive case. If the student or employee comes, um, if a student or employee that came in contact with the sick individual displays any signs or symptoms of COVID-19, they will be asked to stay home and report the issue to the school administration so we can continue our contact tracing. If a family would like to opt to keep their student home with a positive exposure for a 14-day quarantine period, then the student's teachers will work with the student to make sure any missing assignments or work can be completed in a timely manner. Also, for everyone's safety and health, if a student or employee lives with someone who does have a confirmed positive COVID test, we ask that that student or employee remain home um, until they've completed a 14-day quarantine period. At that point, if no symptoms have developed during those 14 days, the student or employee may return. Now, school closures can, will be based off several measures, and please um, try not to prejudge. We're continuing to have, get new information, so our plan may adjust, but currently it's based off state mandates, as well as the numbers within the schools themselves. We have already done some number tracing with our sports, and we'll touch on that later, but we will be keeping track of positive tests. If we find that the number of positive tests is reaching a level that we no longer feel it is safe to continue in-person um, education, then we will obviously be switching back to the all online platform. Um, other indicators will be exponentially um, rising cases. And obviously this input would be a combination between the district, school in question, and associated medical um, officials. Thank you. Sanitizing take place during and after the school day and on school buses. Will cleaning supplies and personal protective equipment be supplied to classrooms? For the, thank you for the question, Ms. Sterling. As far as uh, cleaning and sanitizing and disinfecting, Tempe Union will clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces, so keyboards and equipment, door handles, sinks, water fountains, et cetera, within the school day as much as possible, but at least one deep cleaning daily. The use of shared objects in the classroom, so in PE or in gym, art supplies, laptops, cyan goggles, should be limited when possible, but if they are having to be used, they are cleaned and sanitized prior to another student being able to use them. Tempe Union will inform staff and students that they are expected to clean and disinfect workspaces and student desk when they arrive and also when they leave the, the classroom 
for the workplace and also the student desk. We will support employees and students' healthy hygiene behaviors by providing adequate supplies, including soap, hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. We will also have paper towels, tissues, disinfectant wipes, cloth face coverings, and trash cans. Tempe Union has developed a schedule for increased routine cleaning and disinfecting throughout the day. We will also schedule our custodial staff for increased cleaning of surfaces, especially bathrooms throughout the day. And Tempe Union will ensure safe and correct use and storage of cleaning and disinfecting material, including storing products daily and also the products meet the EPA disinfecting criteria. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question, what are the protocols for keeping teachers and staff safe? Thank you. The safety of our teachers and staff is a top priority. A communication was sent out earlier today that outlines guiding principles for how TUHSD will protect their employees. The administrative teams at each school will meet with their returning teachers and staff to review the return to work protocols. We will also be vigilant in helping ensure all employees and visitors to our sites adhere to these guidelines. We are committed to providing safe environments for all TUHSD employees and students. I'd like to introduce Ms. Kim Hilgers, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning. Ms. Hilgers, how will we begin the school year? We have two, two learning models to choose from, an in-person model and a Tempe Union online model. Many of you have asked about our blended learning model, and we wanted to address this change. We originally introduced a blended learning model where students would be divided into groups, attend in-person on some days, and online on other days. However, state funding requirements mandated that schools offer to be open to all students five days a week and provide resources accordingly. This model brings its own set of challenges and would require us to have additional staffing, additional space to supervise and support those students who are not in class. For our families that are choosing the in-person model, it's important for you to understand that our current, we are currently under an executive order that prevents us from physically opening up school sites. As a result, classes will begin on August 3rd and will be delivered virtually until at least August 17th. I'll address the specifics of this uh, in my next answer. But for the first two weeks, that will involve real-time interaction between teachers and students and this will be conducted remotely. It also allows us to continue to adapt to any new guidelines or any executive orders that Governor Ducey issues. The advantage of beginning virtually is that all the courses that students registered for in the spring still remain intact. Teachers will teach virtually, either from their homes or from their classroom, in real time, with lessons that are aligned to standards. This option will be in place and, until it's deemed safe for staff and students to return back to school. Tempe Union has invested a lot in our virtual experience. We've purchased many monitors, um, cameras, Bluetooth headsets, um, any, some software tools, and even some laptops. And so those first two weeks will be more robust and will be more dynamic. This model also allows us to return to a more normal learning environment with enhanced safety protocols to keep our students and our, sa our staff safe. And it allows us to continue to prepare safe transition for returning to school five days a week. All that planning will include principals, site leadership, teachers, and staff. For our fully online model, students will enroll in Tempe Online. To transfer to the Tempe Union Online Program, students will complete a registration process in the next few weeks. They'll work with a counsel, counselor and at that time select courses. And we've really expanded our selection of online course offerings. Students enrolled in Tempe Union Online will also associate a homeschool 
at an in-person campus. Thank you. Our next question is, how is the in-person model in remote mode different from the fourth quarter online experience? The teaching and learning process will look and feel differently than it did fourth quarter at the beginning of this year and possibly throughout the entire first quarter. A major difference will be that the teaching and learning process will be delivered in real time. Students will be engaging virtually online with teachers. They'll follow their master's schedule with attendance taken for each course. Staff will teach from their classroom or from their home with the aid of that additional technology with the expectation that they begin and end their classes following their school's bell schedule. This provides some type of normalcy and also establishes student accountability. We recognize that this is a very different model from last spring, so we've provided additional training for our staff. There have been numerous professional development opportunities during the entire month of June and July, and for the beginning of the school year, additional uh, professional development will be offered to our teachers. And finally, our weekly collaborative teaching time will continue to focus for teachers to plan and apply their new skills and knowledge to create dynamic lessons that engage our students in more rigorous learning. Thank you. What are some of the specific ways that Tempe Union has invested in supporting students during this critical time? Thank you. Um, proud to say that we have additional days for our teachers um, time is always a concern for our, any of our employees, but for our teachers especially because they thrive and, and do want uh, time for professional development. And so we have added uh, several days for our teachers to take part in that. And it will be a collaborative effort with our teachers, with our team leaders, our department leaders, our uh, district uh, staff, but, but also working collaboratively together so that we, our focus is really starting the two weeks off in a very successful manner. Uh, we've also increased access to technology uh, for both our teachers and students. And an exciting thing, and I think Mrs. Hilgers mentioned that earlier, that we have made an investment uh, at the last board meeting on our conference motion sensitive cameras uh, for our teachers to use for this virtual uh, interactive experience. Uh, while they are uh, teaching from their classrooms or home during this remote period. Uh, docking stations that are mobile and extra large LED monitors so that they can track students on their screens and, all, and the uh, Bluetooth headsets so that they can actually hear what's going on and manage the, com the communication and conversations in a, in a timely and clear way. Um, hot spots for access to our Wi-Fi at our schools, yeah, we have invested for the entire year in our parking lots at all of our schools and we can designate when we, uh, how long we extend the time. So if need be and it's till 10 o'clock at night or midnight, we will be prepared to do just that. Uh, we're also excited because it's very important for us to um, provide opportunities for access for all students. And one way that we did that is that through the removal of course fees uh, right now to support our families during this critical time, um, is just very timely. So all the highly quality elective classes will be available to all our students with, with no course fees. In addition to that, we have uh, eliminated uh, activity and athletic fees. Uh, so when those programs resume, and they will resume, um, all our students can take part in that and, and have access to our quality uh, athletic and activity programming. Our governing board prioritizes all our students and uh, made this as a big priority uh, move for uh, some of the decisions this year and I couldn't be more proud of them. So I thank the board for that as well. Thank you. Next we'd like to focus on electives. How will electives be taught in the in-person model while it is in remote mode? Thank you for the question. Um, first and foremost, teachers want to be back in the classroom. I haven't spoken to any teacher yet that says they don't want to go back, but they want to do it safely. And just right now in the state of Arizona, it's not safe to go back in the classroom with 35 kids packed into a room. Uh, in the elective area, which I have taught in for the last 28 years, teachers are getting together 
and working virtually, and they have been for the entire summer. They are meeting, uh, they're talking on the phone, they're video conferencing, and they're emailing and texting each other on a, on a regular basis. They're going to be ramping up those meetings more frequently over the next couple of weeks as we prepare for the opening of school, and they're going to be creating lesson plans for our students. We completely get that virtual learning cannot totally replace uh, the specialized in-class type of curriculum that we regularly teach our students. Um, some bigger projects and performances are going to have to be scaled down or pushed back uh, to when we can meet in person again. Uh, the third point is the teachers in the district office are already working on ways to get equipment, supplies, instruments, and other things to students who don't have access to them already. For me, it's critical that my students have access to art supplies, cameras, computers that have special software installed so they can do their work at home. Uh, it may take a few weeks to work out the logistics of a pickup or delivery schedule, but I'm confident that they will receive those items. I've even told colleagues that I'm willing to drive these items to my students myself, just to ensure that they have the supplies that they need. I've spoken to several of my peers in various content areas about what they are planning for the upcoming year. Classes like music, culinary, ceramics, just to name a few. The one common thing that they say is that they are confident that they can offer um, a, a rigorous and, and meaningful learning environment for their kids virtually in the beginning of the year. Um, they've learned a lot from their experience last year during the fourth quarter. You know, we were thrown into a situation where we were not prepared to be teaching virtually and kids were not held accountable for their grades, so everything sort of fell off after a while. This year we're confident that with grading being done and, and the ability to assess our students' performance, on their assignments that we will get the buy-in that we need to do an effective job to teach our students. Uh, the biggest difference will be the ability to assess at home and uh, the work they do at home. Uh, the plan is for us to focus on essential skills and improve on the skill level wherever they are currently and, and try to get them to perform better at whatever class they're taking. Uh, and making sure they can transition back into the in-person working or learning model when we are safe to go back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adams. We're going to turn our attention next to our Tempe Union online model. Dr. Frimmer, what will a typical online day look like for students? Good evening. Thank you. A typical online day for Tempe Union students will be different than for the in-person model. Students will not have a set schedule, they will not have required daily interactions with their teachers, and they will work at their own pace. They will have three courses per, per every nine weeks that they are completing, and they'll be expected to work approximately two hours per day per course to complete the courses in the nine weeks. They will also have the opportunity to meet individually with their teachers, either virtually or, or in person at labs at each of our campuses. Finally, final exams and some assignments will be either in person or virtually proctored by their instructors. And if a student chooses the online model, will they be allowed to participate in extracurricular activities or athletics? Yes, all students who register in Tempe Union Online will also have a home school at one of the other campuses in the district. And at that campus, they will be able to participate in extracurricular and activities like sports and clubs and all of the other activities. Extracurricular activities will be in person or virtual depending on safety considerations and in compliance with the CDC and district guidelines. Will students have access to the same classes online as they would in the in-person model? We, we do have an extensive list of online course offerings but they are not identical to the in-person model. We've listened to the requests of our community over the last few weeks and added quite a few courses, especially in the areas of AP Honors and Dual Enrollment. As a result, we have a wide variety of core classes at all levels. We've also added Fine Arts, World Language, CTE, and other general electives. We continually add to this list and we encourage the community members to go to our website to see our most recent list. 
If students start the school year with Tempe Union Online, can they switch models should the COVID-19 situation improve? Yes, students will have the opportunity to switch back, but it will need to be at the end of the semester. Currently, if you are look, we are extending the deadline to enroll in Tempe Union Online to this Thursday, the 16th. And will a freshman orientation occur this year for online students? So Tempe Union holds freshman orient, virtual freshman orientation as well as resource distribution days. And Tempe Union online students will have an opportunity to participate in all of those. In addition, online students will have a virtual orientation on the first day of class on August 3rd. And the district is looking at doing virtual parent meet the parent nights sometime in August. Next, we're going to turn our attention to special education. How will services be provided to special education students while the in-person model is in remote mode or in the Tempe Union online model? Good evening. Regardless of if you're a parent or an educator, aren't we all striving to provide a sense of normalcy for our students so that they continue to have access to meaningful educational opportunities? Services for our special education services, our special education students will be aligned to their IEP regardless of if you select the online model or the in-person model. If you've selected the in-person learning model for your student, your student will receive all of their specially designed instructional minutes per their IEP the first two weeks of the school year, perhaps longer depending on the governor's orders. When we can all return to campuses, they will receive their direct services in person. If you selected an online learning model for your student when the 2021 school year resumes, then we will be contacting you when our staff return because we need to set up immediate IEP meetings before school starts and the team will have the job to determine if an online learning platform is the best location of services for your student to receive their free appropriate public education. Public education. Most of all, please be assured that all students with IEPs will have equal access comparable to their gen ed peers. All students will receive their individualized service minutes, their accommodations, their modifications, and their direct instruction, regardless of which learning model you receive. Most importantly, please know how committed we are to making sure that your student receives their specially designed instructional minutes and keeping in mind that we protect the health and safety of all students and the people that provide their services, whether or not it's direct services or related services. Thank you. Thank you. Our next few questions have to do with athletics and activities. First, what are the plans and guidelines for athletics? Uh, thank you for the question, Ms. Sterling. Uh, first, I'd like to, before I answer that question, I'd like to introduce our uh, at least by name, our new District Director of Athletics and Activities, Mr. David Huffine. Uh, Mr. Huffine and I have been working with associations, including AIA, the CDC, NFHS, ABOTA, and many others. Tempe Union High School Athletics will continue to follow the guidelines and phases for practices and competition. Currently, if it is possible to do so, the AIA has made August 17th as the first day of fall sports. We will continue the summer conditioning program as well. We will start again on July 20th under phase one. Dr. Overland, would you like to share anything with this question? Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Um, so we in the Tempe Union High School District have already been utilizing a four phase return to plan sports during the month of June. During our four weeks that we had our phase one going, we only had two reported positive COVID-19 tests in our athletes over that period. Um, we believe this was, despite the elevation in the community, um, was due to our very comprehensive return to play um, program, our diligent athletic trainers, and our amazing coaching staff, all of which have gone above and beyond to hold everyone accountable to the safety measures we have put in place. Unfortunately, due to the expo exponentially rising numbers in Arizona, we did make the decision to take a two-week break and reassess, as Mr. McDonald just stated. 
Um, at this time, we do plan to reinstate our phase one, beginning with fall sports as early as next week, as long as our reports of positive tests within the student athletes and coaching population remains low. Also, um, as we have stated, um, there is a tentative starting date by the AIA for fall sports is August 17th, but this is obviously a fluid date and we know this can change. Some of the things we have already been doing is we have been utilizing daily temperature checks, daily symptom questionnaires, mask use at all times indoors, social distancing, appropriate disinfecting procedures outlined by the CDC, and contact tracing when appropriate. Um, I don't have time to obviously detail every phase, so you're just going to have to, um, if you have more information, we can provide that for you. But um, right now, we have been utilizing a guideline that really took into account local, national, international guidelines and CDC best practices. Moving between phases will be determined by several factors. First and foremost, state mandates, um, as well as our own AIA recommendations. Our own um, district um, positive COVID-19 case numbers, and also very importantly, whether or not a positive case in one of our athletes or coaches resulted in another teammate or coach subsequently being infected. Um, prior to moving from one phase to the next, we must first see, um, first and foremost, a plateauing of cases statewide. And in order to return to activities that are required by contact sports such as football um, or even basketball, we need to see a decline in the numbers in our state for a minimum of two weeks. And I stress minimum. Um, this could change based on our overall um, community numbers. And we will also move back stages, as we have recently shown. If our community or school numbers are once again exponentially increasing or maintaining the safety of our coaches or student athletes becomes unrealistic, then we have no problem deciding that we need to move back to a previous level. Thank you, Dr. Overlin and Mr. McDonald. What about activities? What are the plans and guidelines for activities currently? Thank you, Ms. Sterling. We've had several questions in regard to marching band, orchestra, choir, and drama. And as of this morning, we learned that the Arizona Band and Orchestra Directors Association in Arabota and the Arizona Marching Band Association have canceled the fall 2020 competition schedule. We will continue to monitor guidelines from these organizations and implement, implement accordingly. We now turn to social and emotional wellness. Mr. McDonald, what kinds of supports are in place for the social emotional wellness of students during this time? Of course, one of the most important things is to provide that social emotional wellness to our, our students and our staff. Uh, we have several student support professionals on staff who can continue to support our students in various ways. Uh, depending on the student and the nature of concern, Students can be assisted by their counselors, Care 7 Youth Specialists, social workers, psychologists, behavior interventionists, our dropout preventionists, and even our nurses. Support might take the place of many different ways. We might be able to do short-term counseling or consult, uh, more sustained counseling, check-ins, groups, and other consult, even with parents. Referrals to other students or schools and community resources, both in person and in a remote fashion. We have also trained our staff and will continue to train our staff on warning signs to watch for so that students who are at risk or in distress can be identified and referred as needed. Our student support staff are trained in how to respond to students in need. And this year, we will be enhancing that training by reviewing the Tempe Union Individual Crisis Response Protocol that we reviewed and revised the last several months. Also, we want to make sure that we clarify how to support students, even if they are learning at home or in a remote fashion. This year, we're also happy to say that CARE 7 Youth Specialists will be at each of our schools full time and also available during the summer so that students have access to social emotional supports and referrals year round. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Superintendent Mendeville? First, I want to say thank you to our panelists and everybody sitting up here contributing to the very thoughtful and detailed answers to the uh, very thoughtful and detailed questions that you presented uh, during this time. And um, there was a lot of questions that have we've provided answers to. There are additional questions that we will uh, continue to update and include on our website under the frequently asked questions, so the FAQ. But this does conclude the virtual forum for this evening. And as a reminder, again, our FAQs will be updated this week on our website. We encourage you to check the website regularly for the most up-to-date information. And again, thank you to our panelists and, and everyone who joined us virtually tonight. Uh, this is the first time we've done something like this, and more than likely it won't be the last. We hope that you find this information useful when making the best decision possible for you and your family. Please know we care about all of our families our teachers and our staff very much. Thank you and have a great evening.